Let's set our project with WorldGen. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Alright, we found us back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be setting up the basic WorldGen. So this is going to be a prerequisite tutorial for, well, tree gen and ore gen and bush generation and almost any other type of world gen that requires configured features and place features. So yeah, this is basically going to be the setup. Nothing really is going to be added in this tutorial. However, like I said, it is going to be a prerequisite. So do keep that in mind. Now, a prerequisite to this particular tutorial is data gen and specifically here, the data pack entries provider over here. That one we will need to add. Of course, as always, you can also check the description down below where there is a GitHub repository link with all of the code available to you as well. So that is going to be absolutely fine. With that, let's get started. So in our tutorial mode package, we're going to right click new package and this is going to be the world gen package. There we are going to need three new Java classes. The first one is going to be the mod biome modifiers class modifiers. There you go. Then we're going to have in the world gen package again, the mod configured features class features features. There you go. And then last but certainly not least, we have the mod placed features class. Of course, I'll explain what each of these crazy things is and will do. The configured features, this is also where we're going to start. I'm going to give a rough overview on how WorldGen works. Now, this is a very simplified view of this, but hopefully it's still going to be useful for you to understand how this freaking thing works, because I will, I will say this, WorldGen can be quite complicated and... It is one of the more complicated topics overall in, in modding, but hopefully this is going to at least show you a little bit of how this works. So we're going to have three different things. When we have something that we want to spawn in the world, let's say a custom ore, right? In our case, obviously, we have, if we go in here, let's say we have the Alexandrite ore and we want to spawn this. But first of all, in theory, of course, we could just spawn one block. But that's a little bit boring, right? We need to somehow make a, it's not a structure because that's obviously a different thing, but let's think about it abstractly, right? We need to put this block in some sort of formation. That would be what we call a feature. Now, any feature we can configure is then a configured feature because in the case of, let's say an ore, we can say, hey, how many of the ore blocks do we want to have in a bunch? And that would then be an ore vein. And all of a sudden, we have a configured feature because we have a certain configuration that we can add to it. Awesome. Now, this configured feature is how is this going to look like? The placed feature then answers the question, how will this be placed inside of the world? Because sure, now we have like eight different ores, right? In a weird combination. Sure, we've defined this here in the configured feature. We've configured this. But then the question is, okay, how will this be placed? Now, what does that mean? At what Y level will this be placed? How many of these veins will be placed in a chunk? And we can ask multiple other questions as well in the placed feature, right? And that's basically what the placed feature then is for. And then finally, you might say, well, now we have obviously answer all the questions. Well, wait a second. Where is it going to be placed though? So it's sort of like the, how does it look like? How is it going to be placed? And then where is it going to be placed? That's sort of the three steps over here from configured feature to place feature to the biome modifiers. That's the whole idea. And in this case over here in this tutorial, we're just simply going to set up everything so that we can immediately jump in into the next tutorial with custom origin. For this, we're going to copy over a couple of methods. Like I said, everything here is available down below as is always. And I highly recommend you go there and take a look. Now, all of these methods, they're super simple. So in the mod configured features class, we have a register key method that simply registers as a key for a resource key of type configured feature. Now we're going to need this because this is going to be a, well, the registration for the resource key, because each time you are going to generate a JSON file, we actually need a resource key for that specific thing. And then the register method here registers the actual configured feature. Now you have seen something similar to this before. If you have gone through the trim material and trim pattern methods or tutorials, because look at this register, there's a bootstrap context over here and there's a resource key of a thing that we are trying to register. And that is the exact same way that this works. And the idea here is that anytime you want to generate something via the data pack entries, the general setup of the class it's almost going to be the same every time, except of course, the general thing that you want to actually register. So what we're going to have is we're going to also add a public static void bootstrap method with a bootstrap context 
of type configured feature of type question mark comma question mark. Now the question marks over here, those are basically wild called card generics. You don't need to understand this 100%. Basically, it just says that we can register any type of configured feature that we want, regardless of what it entails over here. That's the whole idea. And with this bootstrap method, we have the mod configured features class done. We can move on to the next part, which is the placed features. Like I said, this is how is this going to be placed. And here, once again, we're going to copy over two of the methods, which is the register key method and the register method. And as you can see, they look almost eerily similar to the ones here. They just have a different registry that we're going to create because, of course, here we want a resource key of a placed feature, and that's basically it. So the general gist of this, very similar. And similarly here, when we have a public static void bootstrap method with a bootstrap context, here is going to be of a placed feature, of course, and we're going to name this context. And one thing we will need here as well is we will need to, because if we think back, right, we go from a configured feature to a placed feature to a bio modifier. Now, this placed feature, of course, needs to somehow refer back to a configured feature. And for this, we're going to have a var. Now, the reason I'm calling this var is because the actual name of this particular field is holder getter of type configured feature of type question mark question mark. And that's just a very long. So we're just going to call it var configured feature. We're going to call this configured features actually equal to the context dot lookup. And then we're going to pass in registries dot configured feature. So the idea being that with this lookup that we're going to get, I can actually see I, this is a holder getter of S and S is in this case a configured feature. And we can look up any type of configured feature we want with this. And this is going to be then able to be used later down the line when we refer back to a configured feature. Pretty useful in this case. And that is awesome. And that is also the mod placed features class done. Absolutely fantastic. And then we can go on the mod biome modifiers. Now the biome modifiers will only do one custom or one method here in this case, which is the register key method, because the registration, we're going to do that in line when we actually get to it in the next tutorial. And here, once again, of course, registering the key, this time of biomodifier. And one thing you will see is that this is under forge registries, keys, biomodifiers, because the biomodifier is actually a forge or new forge specific thing that the API itself has added. Pretty freaking cool. And that basically then is going to be able to, well, you can say, hey, uh, these are the biomes I want to have this place feature placed in. And there you go. And then they are going to be placed in specific biomes. This, of course, also once again requires a public static void bootstrap method with a bootstrap context of type biome modifier. I'm going to call this the context over here. And here we're going to need two vars. First, because of course we need to refer back to the placed feature because that's the thing we're going to place inside of the world. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. Context.lookup. And this is, of course, for registries dot placed feature. And then if we were to need it, but we're just going to get it, we also want a var biomes because, well, maybe what we want to do is we want to look up some biomes, right? So, of course, we want to say, hey, please add this specific thing to only the plains biome and the savanna biome or only the, I don't even know, cold ocean biome and something like that. And then, of course, for this, we need the biomes over here to properly use those and refer back to each of those biomes. And now the three classes are set up. There is one more thing that we need to do, and that is we want to go to a data gen to our mod data pack entries. Like I said, if you do not have this, that's fine. You can simply create this particular class. It's all there in the description below. The GitHub repository has basically everything there that you might need. And then we're just going to duplicate this three times because we want to add three different things. The first one here is, of course, for the configured feature, making sure we actually choose the configured feature here. And then we're going to say mod configured features bootstrap. Then here for the registries, we're going to have the placed feature. And this is going to be the mod placed features. Awesome. And then last but certainly not least, we're going to have the forge registries. So forge registries dot keys dot biome modifiers. Where of course, we're going to use the mod biome modifiers bootstrap method right here. And with this, we have everything set up. Now, in this case, all of this should be exactly the same in 1.21.1 as it is in 1.21.3 and possibly above. I don't know. I haven't tried it with uh, 0.4 or above yet. So, so I don't know about that. But, you know, my gut tells me it might actually be the same because I don't think they have touched world gen once in, uh, in a blue moon. They actually have not touched world gen, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, those are basically the steps over here. And with this done, we can then 
after this generate the JSON files needed. And of course, we could, you know, in theory, also take a look at those JSON files down here in the Minecraft client extra. We can take a look at the data files and in under world gen, we can actually see there are configured features. These are all of the configured features that vanilla adds. How awesome is this? We can look at any one of those. And this is, of course, the JSON file that then gets generated, which we're basically going to put into code right here. And then this one gets output by this. Really awesome, really cool. You can also take a look at the place features. Where are they? There you go. Place features. And of course, in this case, there are no bio modifiers because bio modifiers are specific for Forge or Neo Forge because this is basically a way us modders can actually add something to a biome, right? This is going to be a bio modifier. But like I said, we're going to see that in the next tutorial. And speaking of the next tutorial, that's going to be right here where we're going to add custom origin. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.